GoNet News, your galaxy in focus. May 22, 3301. On today's news, independent pilots join forces in Wolf 406. Pilot breaks galactic record twice. Sagittarius A Star Sniper. GoNet News issues a redden. The upgrade of the shipyards at Hamilton Gateway are underway in Wolf 406 with independent traders contributing metals in the million of tons. The contract between Lakon Spaceways and the Wolf 406 transport company is therefore secured, and the system will become an official producer of the Lakon Diamondback spaceship. This also confirms the newfound status of the company as an important provider for the Alliance Navy in the region. This construction project is also sponsored by two major independent pilot groups, the Alliance Elite Diplomatic Corps, the AEDC, and the Mercenaries of Mikan, both organizations invite members of the Pilots' Federation to haul any type of metal to Hamilton Gateway in Wolf 406. As the upgrade progresses, the Wolf 406 Transport Company promises to offer a discount to participating independent pilots on the purchase of diamond bags produced at the shipyards. This discount will be proportional to the total amount of metals collected. As with many large-scale projects, the high volume of trading also attracted its share of shady characters. Criminals from all over the galaxy, including many from famous pirate organizations such as the Code and the Cosmic State Vikings, flocked to the system in the hopes of stealing riches from defenseless traders. Although security has been increased, the Wolf 406 Allied Police Force warns incoming traders to exercise extreme caution while traveling with valuable metals on board. The accomplishments of independent pilots participating in the Buckyball Run A-Star Rally Race continue to make headlines around civilized space. This 26,000 light years rally race to the supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy so far attracted over 40 fearless competitors. One of these competitors, Commander Allot, has made a name for himself by beating the galactic record for the quickest run twice in less than a month. Alot's current time to reach Sagittarius A star, an incredible 9 hours and 39 minutes, was accomplished aboard a Falcon de la Anaconda named Ronda. In comparison, his previous record-breaking attempt was done in 11 hours and 46 minutes using a Lake on Spaceways asp called the Big Bird. Garnet News correspondent Leonard Chamberlain sat down with this trailblazer for an exclusive interview. Commander Alot first described the friendly atmosphere surrounding the Buckyball community. Whilst there is definitely some healthy competition, it's all about having fun. All sorts of pilots enter in all sorts of ships, often just to say that it could. The Buckyball run A-Star was also the perfect excuse to go sightseeing. I've never been that much of an explorer, so being able to go and see the sights of the galactic core was quite appealing. Furthermore, Alot explained why he decided to travel to Sagittarius A-Star again so soon after his first attempt. My second run was partly due to things I learned from the first. There were several issues along the way I hadn't anticipated, and I thought I could do better. According to him, long-distance racing is much more about long-term concentration, getting into the rhythm of jumping and scooping, and adapting when things don't go according to plan. A lot reminded pilots hopeful to attempt this trip to Sagittarius A star, not to forget to take several short breaks and pack lunch beforehand. When asked for a final statement, Alot answered philosophically. Nothing lasts forever. I'm quite sure that in time my record will be beaten. In fact, I've already heard of several skilled pilots planning their next attempt, and I wish them the best of luck. At the time of broadcast, Commander Klig took the lead in the race by a mere 8 minutes using an anaconda named the Rubdub. However, Klig himself speculated in a short statement that it was only a matter of time before Alot climbs back to the first position. When Commander Devil Schools woke up this morning and fired up his ship systems, having made a historic trip to Sagittarius A-Star the night before, he was in for a surprise. Whilst enjoying the view of the Great Annihilator, he was interdicted by one Commander Rhododendron, flying an asp, and promptly attacked and destroyed. Commander Dabosculus was later picked up and returned to civilized space, 
but is outraged at the exploration data that was lost when his vessel was destroyed, which amounted to three days and over 1,000 systems worth of data. Commander Debosku said he accepted that the pilot's life was one of risk, but added that he demands to know what action Universal Cartographics will take in order to deter such wanton acts of aggression against those in deep space. Many other commanders have condemned the behavior of the Sagittarius A-Star Sniper, with several offering private bounties for proof of the sniper's destruction. The sniper says that it took him only five days to fly to Sagittarius A-Star, and he is unrepentant, stating that with any luck, more explorers, cut off from the news of civilized space, will fall under his lasers before he himself is eventually destroyed. The sniper has repeatedly referred to his own impending doom, and some have speculated that his acts are an elaborate attempt at suicide by commander. From other remarks, the sniper has suggested that fame is not what he seeks, rather that he is driven by a desire to see the galaxy born. Opponent News would like to apologize for the misunderstanding regarding the statement released by Ashling's Angels in the last broadcast regarding the story Arisa implicated in Quivirin resistance, and issued a following clarification. Commander Jason Pagazzi, newly appointed head of public relations for Ashling's Angels, today issued a statement in order to clarify the position regarding Senator Lavigny's COVID arms smuggling. Following confusion as to whether this stated support for any humanitarian efforts constituted condoning Levigny's actions. Ashling Zangers strongly opposed Senator Levigny's attempt to arm the Quivirin resistance, in the words of Commander Pegasi. The actions of Arisa, who claims to represent the Empire as a whole, are less forgivable. Covertly arming desperate people who have already lost the fight in defiance of Imperial law is asking for a Quivirin slaughter, exactly what would have happened if they provoked Patreas into continuing the war. Perhaps this is what Arisa was counting on, a condemnation of her in its own right. The alternative, terrible even to contemplate, is that she was inciting open rebellion against the Empire itself, arming untrained refugees and encouraging them to go forth and kill loyal Imperial citizens. And why did she do this? As a petty insult against a political rival? We are glad that the Quivirans rejected her poisoned pill and saw the benefits of peaceful coexistence when offered by our own Ashling Duval. But the situation casts serious thoughts on Levigny's loyalty to the Empire as well as her ability to lead. Gordon News apologizes for the misunderstanding. And that was the news for today. I'm Johan Vince, and tune in next time to keep your galaxy in focus.